What's happening at the collective global level right now is that we're having one of those rock bottom moments. Mm. For those of you who um, have heard me, I've talked so often about my holistic therapist and like she's a life coach, she's an executive coach, she is um, a sister from another mister. So it is my privilege and my honor to welcome to On One with Angela Rye. It's a master class though, because y'all are going to learn a lot from her. This is Yadi. Um, and so I just am so grateful that you have been so willing to not only share of yourself with me, but also share yourself with my listening audience, my viewing audience. And I think especially right now is so mm. key. Um, so we have talked a little bit in passing about the significance of this moment, um, given that we're all kind of... Um, it's so interesting, Yadi. I think about so often how you'll say to me, like, you're so you're so much in the doing, like you have to be in your being. And like this thing was like, everybody be. <laughs> right? So I would no love to choice. hear from you about, you know, what you think this moment, the significance of this moment really mm -hmm. represents. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, Angela, if first we can do a grounding. Yeah. Only so that not only do, can you and I come really present with one another, yeah. but so that everybody could get a chance. I love it. Let's do it like really a normal get. session. Yes. Exactly. Let's, do it. let's just go there. Let's yeah. do this proper. Okay. So it's good. It's basically a, it's a breath that I call the ocean breath, mm -hmm. as you know, Angela. And so it's very simple. It's basically you're breathing in through your nose, but when the air goes through your throat, it, it sounds a little bit like you're snoring. Mm -hmm. But it could also sound like the, like the ocean, how it goes out into itself and then back into itself. And so then you hold that breath in your body and you allow just anything. Well, I'm going to guide you through it, but you just allow everything that needs to come forth, mm -hmm. that needs to be released to just come to the surface. Mm -hmm. So that then with the out breath, which is also going to be through your nose, you're just letting it be fully go, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you're ready to let go of. Okay. And so what we do is we just sit straight. It's important for the, for the spine to be straight and we close our eyes and this is what it sounds like. And so as you're breathing in this way, we're taking the opportunity to just get really present with our physical body. So just feeling into whatever's there that's present with you, especially as you hold that breath. So you're breathing in, you hold that breath and anything that is there that may be bothering you, it could be something as simple as a tightness in your chest or a lower back pain that's chronic Whatever it may be, just even a slight discomfort, could be a big one too, you're just allowing it to be present with you, to come to the surface. And you're going to notice that the longer you hold the breath in, the more powerful the release is going to be when you just breathe out through your nose. And you're not pushing the breath out through your nose. You're literally just allowing it to cascade out. And so with that cascading out, you're letting go of just anything that is no longer serving you, that has manifested in your physical body, that doesn't need to be there no more. Just letting it go. For some of us, it may be the first time this day or this morning, whenever you listen to this, that you are, that you're feeling into your body. So just really take that opportunity to get present. And as we continue with this breath, we're now gonna go to another part 
that makes up who we are, which is our emotional body. So as you're breathing in these deep breaths, and you hold the breath, you're allowing yourself to go to memories throughout the day, or maybe previous days, or maybe this whole season, that somehow triggered you in a way that was the provoked a strong emotion. So you're going to that memory, but you're not letting go of the emotion itself, of the judgment you may have had around that emotion. Or perhaps the judgment that you had around how you dealt with that emotion, whether you allowed that emotion to control your behavior or you suppressed that emotion, however it is that you interacted with it, you're letting go of the judgment. With each breath, just feeling your internal emotional waters just start to harmonize. So with your next breaths, we're gonna start to come into the mind, which is a vast landscape. And in this landscape, you're not identifying with the thoughts, you're Matter of fact, allowing the thoughts to still be there, if they're there. What you're doing is that you're starting to just become the space that contains it all. And you may notice that for this, maybe your breath dissipates all together. As you just melt into that landscape for a moment. And so let's just do that now. So coming back to the ocean breath, we're now going to clear the energetic field, what some people call the aura. And so what we're doing is that we're just intending that with each breath in, as you're breathing in deeply, and you're holding the breath, that you're clearing anything that doesn't belong to you. It could be a judgment from people close to you or expectations it could be fear from the collective consciousness. And so it doesn't, you don't need to know exactly what it is or who it's coming from. You're just intending that with each breath out, you're letting go of anything that is not vibrating at the highest frequency of love. And that simply is not yours for you to carry, just letting it go. Because this time is very special, we're going to go deeper and we're going to continue with this breath. And not only are we going to let go of that that doesn't belong to us, that's, that feels dense, but we're going to create some alchemy from all of it. Meaning that instead of just like bouncing it out and trying to get rid of it, we're going to imagine that we're taking this energy because at the end of the day, it's just energy. And we're going to alchemize it so that as we breathe it out, we're breathing out compassionate, free loving, alchemized energy. And so let's do that now. And still with our eyes closed, we're going to start to naturally come back to our regular rhythmic breathing pattern.
and just feeling into into the before and the after probably feeling clear in regards to where we begin and where we end feeling more embodied and present with ourselves when we're present with ourselves we're present for others and we become a gift not just to ourselves but to all of those that that are in our lives and so when you're ready you can slowly start to open your eyes or leave them closed whatever feels best mm. Hey, Angela. Hello, <laughs> my sister Yadi. Um, wow, that's so good. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, like I, I just, at first, like I had all these ideas about, you know, the complaints that I've heard or the ones that I've experienced during this time and like, like sifting through that. But I think um what I would rather do which is what I feel like you do for me every time we talk is like just from a solutions place like what is and then how do we deal as a result you know mm -hmm. um and so given like this current climate um people are, are really afraid they are you know worried about income and worried about um whether or not they'll get sick whether they'll be hospitalized all of these things and so I want you, if you can, to just tap into like what we should be encouraged by mm -hmm. given the time that we're in, knowing that it is like a real moment to like hard stop mm -hmm. and figure out, you know, what we should make of this moment or if we should mm -hmm. make anything of this moment. Mm -hmm. Well, mm. so when I've, I've tapped into my own inner wisdom about what is happening and and also into you know when we tap into our own inner, inner wisdom it's impossible not to tap into our ancestry mm -hmm. and to into our spirit guides and into our angels which really are our future generations and so when i've been able to really you know come in into my own inner wisdom about what is happening what i keep coming to is that this is an incredible opportunity so it doesn't feel like that. And I recognize that it doesn't. Now, when we are on the verge of growing, of evolving, of expanding, of literally giving birth, it's not always comfortable. Yeah. Matter of fact, sometimes it's just straight up painful. Mm -hmm. And it's straight up painful because we're literally having to let go of, of the ways that haven't served us. And what we have to let go of is a death. Yeah. And so with any death, there's a, there's a shedding, there's a mourning. Now, when we come into the remembrance that with every death, there's a rebirth, mm -hmm. we can simultaneously allow ourselves to be excited for that which is, which, which is coming mm -hmm. without negating that which we're mourning. Because it's not, it, it, they, can, they can coexist simultaneously. Okay? Now, when we look at it from that perspective, in terms of, well, what's the highest, what's one of the highest purpose? There, everything has a higher purpose. Mm -hmm. So just right here between you and I, what's a higher purpose for what is happening for you? Let's just say for you and for me and for, and for a lot of the people that we know is that we have to stop. Not everybody. Not everybody has, has had that privilege. Yeah. But many of us, right? But many of us have been given the opportunity to fully stop. That's radical, and yeah. it's radical based on a system that has been a patriarchal system mm -hmm. that has always that has always valued doing this over non-doing this. Mm -hmm. That has always valued wow. doing this over let's be real this. And so, so that's ingrained in us. It's ingrained in us that it's that what that if we're not in action what we're doing is not worthy. Hmm. And so when everything stops, for some of us, right? When everything stops, we, can't, we have no distractions whatsoever. We can't run away from ourselves. We can't run away from our family dynamics. We can't run away from what I've been calling the elephant in the room within our households. Mm -hmm. 
we have no other choice but to face ourselves, yeah. right? And what's that elephant in the room? Well, in the work that we do, it's called the shadow, mm -hmm. right? And it's not always comfortable to face the shadow. Matter of fact, it could be quite terrifying yeah. to face the shadow because the shadow is what in the coaching world is, is referred to as core limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the shamanistic realm, it's called energetic imprints. Mm -hmm. Now, these energetic imprints or these core limiting beliefs are, are so terrifying to us that we've spent an entire life creating coping mechanisms to not have to deal with them. Absolutely. <laughs> so for all of a sudden, to be sitting in your homes and have to like face the shadow because there's no other, there's no escaping it, mm -hmm. is an incredible opportunity. Wow. Because at the individual level, a lot of my clients come to me because they've hit rock bottom. Mm hmm What's a rock bottom? It's either a rock bottom or it's a nervous breakdown or it's, you know, in, in other words, shit hit the fan. How right? many of those have we had? <laughs> How many of those have we had, Yanni? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what, what's happening in those moments? Well, what's happening in those moments, I say, I, I say that, you know, we all have between five to seven core limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Okay, or these big elephants in the room that we are co-creating our lives with to to one degree or another. Mm -hmm. When they all come out and party together, that's when we're having these these rock bottom moments. Mm -hmm. What's happening at the collective global level right now is that we're having one of those rock bottom moments. Mm -hmm. Wow. The beautiful piece about it is that there's no greater opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, there's, 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 um, it's pretty hard to, to backpedal and to continue to downward spiral, though some can. Yeah. But the great majority of us will, will take this opportunity to rec Now, at the, global, at the global level, what we're talking about is that shit wasn't working before this happened. Yeah. It wasn't working. Mm hmm it wasn't working. And so the worst thing that could literally happen is for us to go back to business as usual yeah. at the collective level. Mm -hmm. So this is an incredible opportunity collectively for us to start to co-create a new paradigm yeah. and new systems that are going to back up that new paradigm. Now that can't happen if we at the individual are not doing the work. Like resisting it. By resisting it by trying to still run away from it, by all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. If we at the individual level are not willing to take this opportunity to basically face the shadow and do, and do the work, mm -hmm. then we can't expect there to be change at the collective level. It's impossible. Yadi, that's so good because just for example, you know that there have been people who've been posting pictures of what's happening environmentally, right? So, you know, mm. before this all happened, you would see the smoggy pictures, and now after, you're seeing people who like, for the first time, I can see the full skyline in LA. So it's like, if we take um, just uh, 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 an example of what's happening on the planet for what's supposed to happen for us, if it's like, if there's a clearing, and you can finally see things for what it is, how are, how are you gonna deal with what is, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, and so I feel like, so let me just feel into that for a moment, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's, it's big. Hmm. Hmm. It's like we've been, so I call it being on synthetic time and not just me. Mm, yeah. People that have been, that have been studying the Mayan calendar, that have been, you know, like just really doing the work, mm -hmm. Right. Um, scholars, quantum people that have gone into quantum physics, mm -hmm. I mean, all kinds of people, to mm -hmm. keep it real, right? Indigenous people from around the world have yeah. been saying this forever. When we are under the patriarchal system of, of valuing only doing this, mm -hmm. we literally are part of the synthetic time. Mm -hmm. Synthetic time that has a linear timeline that's just like a little machine. Bum, 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 yeah. bum, bum. We're literally 
as human beings, we are giving our co-creative authority to a matrix that is outside of us. Yeah. When we stop. And probably and unnatural, we, right? Isn't that kind of the point oh, too? Yeah. Synthetic. Yeah, you said synthetic. Yeah. Yeah. I, synthetic to the degree that what we overstand is that when we go inwards mm -hmm. and we tap into the divine feminine energy within all of us, regardless of gender, mm -hmm. and we respect both forces as equals, then what happens is that we go into our natural rhythm. When we, when we start to tap into our natural rhythm that's not based on, well, on the calendar it says I'm supposed to da, 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 da. On the agenda, the, and then everything gets, we even get brownie points for that. Yeah. Like if we buy our ticket with this much ahead, it's like how, how, we're at this point where we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. We're coming to the recognition that we've been in the great mystery all along. Yeah. Pretending that we not is a pretending. Hmm. Okay. Which is like no wonder and, we, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, please. No, and then it's like, okay, no wonder so, we, we, we live our lives like pretending or being a part of something or developing, like you talked about energetic imprints already. Um, this particular um, crisis, if you will, has invited me, if that's what we kind of want to call it, to do something that you've been challenging me on since we first started our sessions. And that is like... Um, find, find my beingness, <laughs> like, just find it. And, um, not only have I resisted it, it's frustrated me because I'm like, I don't know how to do that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm like, man, this is a trip. The, the other thing that has caused me to wrestle with is, um, for you all who, who don't know Yadi, Yadi, um, will regularly ask us what's in our pleasure. And you know, for me, um, Yadi, that is a question that I wrestle with even feeling like I had the ability, like I could answer, I, how do I get to enjoy stuff? I have all this work to do, like I don't get to. So even that, like, it's like now, the third part of this is what you've asked me to do about my work. You know, what do I really enjoy doing? What do I really want to create? All of those things, it's like now because I can't do the work that I was doing to the degree I was doing it, I'm like, okay, now what? And so it's almost like it's this it's this strange, uncanny blessing because there's so much uncertainty, but the very questions, right, that you kept prompting me to do on a micro level, now on a macro level, we all have to answer. We all have to wrestle with, am I on the right path? Is this really my mission? Is this really in my pleasure? Um, is this really my authentic truth? Am I living my authentic truth? I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow, right? There are so many people around here thinking that tomorrow's not promised. If it's not, what are you going to do with that? You know, it's such a powerful and, and, and if I'm honest, like humbling question, because there's a little bit of fear, like I want to be gone tomorrow. I feel like I still have stuff to do, but like, that's the reality. It's not promised. <sighs> And so what happens when we're in synthetic time, yeah. in the illusion that we're in control, we're terrified of the unknown. The same way in which we, we've <laughs> yeah. been, you know what I'm saying? We're terrified of the unknown. And the unknown come this thing that happens once you, it's outside of you. It's like somewhere over there. Yeah. God forbid you get to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And at some point, okay, you'll, you'll, you'll go into the unknown when, yeah. when the reality of it when we recognize that the divine feminine is the realm of energy, the realm of spirit, from it's the womb of creation from where everything comes, it's the darkness, mm -hmm. it's the great unknown, then all of a sudden, far from being terrifying, we recognize it's been our home all along. Ooh. And when we're able to drop into that remembrance, mm -hmm. then we fine tune into our own natural rhythm, which by the way, always be in alignment with the natural rhythm of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Not just our planet, not just our planet, but literally of the entire cosmos. Mm -hmm. And when we come into alignment with these cosmic energies, we recognize that our sun is not even 
like generally we've been taught, like we see pictures of the sun and we're just rotating around the sun mm -hmm. aimlessly, right? La -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, right? When actually our sun is literally moving in a spiral throughout space, wow. through uncharted territory, as are we. Which means that nothing has ever just been the same. Mm -hmm. That we're constantly going through death and rebirth processes because that's evolution. Mm -hmm. What's constant is that nothing is constant. And so when we stop and when we go inward into that deep place within us from which everything is in alignment, then everything that, that is the material, the material that we call our reality, mm -hmm. we start to recognize we have co-creative power over. Not a fake control power of like, I get to decide what time I fly out and when I take my vacation, but like really a true co-creative power. And when we, when, we, when we come into that recognition, which, it, by the way, it's what wisdom traditions have been telling us all along. Mm. It's what now our Western quantum physics is catching up to mm. and modern medicine, that we are powerful co-creators. That this that we call our reality, mm -hmm, Sorry, that, was... that what we call, and, and we're powerful co-creators because what we call our physical reality which in our Western culture, that's all that's ever mattered. If I could see it, if I could touch it, if I could, then, then it's valid. Then, then and only then it's valid. So when we recognize that literally what we've been calling our tangible physical reality is, is nothing else than life giving us feedback. Mm -hmm. It's a projection of our beliefs. And basically it's life giving us feedback for what it is that we believe then we start to really come into our true nature, which is empowered mm -hmm. in its natural form. Now, what's important I feel right now at this juncture to mention is that life is giving us feedback, not just for the beliefs that are in our conscious mind, but it's also giving us feedback for the beliefs that are in our, in our unconscious mind, mm -hmm. in our subconscious mind meaning that it's giving us feedback for beliefs that we don't even know that we have mm -hmm. or that we own, mm -hmm. which are, by the way, the elephants in the room. Yeah. So and so it's moments could, when we I, wanted, I want you to talk about the elephants in the room as it relates to folks who are having to um, um, social distance and to be quarantined with loved ones, whether spouses or partners or their kids, because the elephants in the room aren't just for you to see. Right. Everybody sees them. So what are the ways that um, people who are in relationship or in quarantine with folks, like how do they deal with, you know, the reality mm -hmm. that the elephants could be in the room and they fight? And, like, when, yeah. how, do, how do you deal with that in a way that's productive and healthy and aligned to your point from earlier? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, by rec by taking accountability that everything we are experiencing, we are co-creating. Okay. Shit's not happening to us. Mm -hmm. Dude's not acting whack just because. Mm -hmm. we, cho we chose that dynamic. Our children are not just like driving us crazy just because. They are giving us a mirror so that we can identify what those elephants in the room have been or those, those core limiting beliefs have been mm -hmm. that literally have followed us like a shadow our entire lives. Mm -hmm. If you dump him or you just distance yourself from your children again and just send them off to boarding school or what have you, right? That that shadow is going to follow you mm -hmm. with the next person, with the next family, with the next job. If you move to China, it's going to follow you. It's your shadow. Mm -hmm. So first, so how do we deal with it? By recognizing that life is constantly giving us feedback through relationships, situations, experiences that confirm our beliefs to be true. Mm -hmm. Life doesn't care if our beliefs are good, bad, ugly, what have you. Yeah. Life only cares that we believe what we believe. 
So then the question is, when you're looking at your elephants in the room, at the situations that, that are not feeling good, mm -hmm. the question is, what would someone need to believe about the nature of life, the nature of self, the nature of romantic partnership, mm -hmm. partnerships, in order to have co-created these dynamics that suck, that don't feel good, that could be a lot better. Yeah. Wherever in the spectrum you're at, you know what I mean? Whatever the spectrum you're at, what would somebody need to have co-created or what would someone need to have believed about the nature of life to have co-created this dynamic? Hmm. And so then what happens is that you're able to then take accountability for the shadow that belongs to you. Yeah. But I want you to answer that because I don't know the answer. Yeah. What, what, does okay. somebody, what does somebody need to believe? Yeah. So let, let's take, for example, let's take my example. Girl. Or you can take mine. It's supposed to be my therapy. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to hear yours. yours. I want to hear yours first. Let me... No, let's take yours. Let's take yours. Let's let let's let you be vulnerable. Let's let you be vulnerable. Bring it all out. Um, yeah. all my shadows. I got more than one, apparently. Um So something so something in your life right now that you're like, damn. Mm-hmm. So um being quarantined with my significant other. Or not I guess not quarantine because we're not sick, but what is this called? So uh uh, Social distancing. No, but they also call it like uh, something stay in place or something. Safer in place. So um, it's like a roller coaster, right? It's just like, it's like, it's good or there's like fine because there's work time or it's like, you know, there's a fight about something random where you're like, where did that even come from? Um, for me, Yachty, I like fight. It feels like for a living. Sorry, my contacts are acting up fight for a mm. living it feels like um on air and so i don't always like want to mm. engage in battle you know um kareem doesn't battle either he's very like um nurturing and kind but the things that he presents that like um as issues to work on i get so pissed because in my head i have this whole perfection image like I don't have no flaws. Like, what are you talking about? So even though I'm self-aware, like, I want to be the person that brings up my stuff. I don't want him to bring my stuff because he's not supposed to see any stuff, which is, like, crazy by itself. But um, that's the truth. And so, like, when he brings something up, is like, you know, I really think we should work on this. I'm like, I don't, I mean, like, we should be good, which is not really reasonable, but that's the truth. So, mm. yeah, like, we're not always aligned in how we see, like, fun time and romantic time and, like, you know, all of these things. So it, it ends up causing conflict. Okay. Okay. So, so the question that I have, my, so first I'm going to just mirror back, okay? Yeah. So what I'm going to mirror back is this Peace around, hmm. hmm, this around being, this piece around, hmm, being in conflict mm -hmm. just as the natural part of your life because of what you do, like calling out the shadow at the global level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's literally in essence what you do. Mm -hmm. You call out the shadow like a crow right to whatever it is that's yes. happening at right like like a crow a crow will not stop yeah okay i mean it, it's it's like it will drive it to the ground yeah and so when you're so this experience that you've had with with your part with kareen right mm -hmm. at home mm -hmm. you know for 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 an extended amount of time where you neither one of you could run away or find a distraction yes. or go to work or what have you, right? Up in each other's, like you have been. Stop, when he brings your shadow up to the surface, right? There's this, there's this feeling of, wait, I'm supposed to bring that up. Yes. I'm the one who does that. Bam. Don't, don't go there with me like that yeah. because that's my job. Yeah. 
especially when it's me. Yeah. Because I'm because I feel like I'm so self aware. Like I got this. I'm working on it. I'm doing it in my time. My mom, mm-hmm. I think, said it best. My mom said one time, Yadi, "Ooh, you sure can dish it, but you can't take it." Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm so like fragile and delicate. Like, oh no, you know. But when I want to be able to tell it like it is and call it out like it is, when it's somebody else, mm-hmm. but when it's my turn, I'm like, oh, you know, which okay. is not fair. And. And the energetic imprint that we have for that is like straight up number two. Like it's literally like number two dot. If I'm not careful, I may discover that I'm not as good as I thought I was. And become pensable. Which is also the energetic imprint, which by the way, a lot of us share in our own unique combination. Mm -hmm. But it's the imprint also that makes it so that it's, it's, way more comfortable to be in the doing this because when you're because basically the way that you because what we have here is what we're speaking of just so that everybody knows right is we have an energetic imprint and in the method that I co-created with spirit that's based on Mayan Toltec and Native American systems of knowledge I always like to bring that up to give credit where credit is due yeah we have an energetic imprint that literally is like a sentence it's a program is what it is it's a program it then has an emotional cocktail that goes along with it. And that emotional cocktail, basically when life gives us evidence that indeed that belief is true, mm-hmm. right? Like the situation with Kareem of like, like, well, Angela, actually what's going on with you is that you got this issue and uh, this issue that may be tied to that or however it was that it presented itself or you're doing too much of it or whatever. Immediate, so for you, you're getting triggered because life is telling you, guess what, mama? You're not as good as you thought you were. Yeah. Your partner is spending days with you and he's seeing shit that you can't even see. Yeah. It's in your blind spot. Hmm. There's an emotional trigger that goes off in you, right? Which is fear, right? It's, it's like a crushing blow, like, like right? It's yeah. frustration. It's shame. Because it's on top of naked. it, they're it's shame. like bare nakedness. Like it's, it feels like it, it feels like instead of me oh. like bearing all, it's like like you're like derobed. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just like pants down in front of the whole. Yeah, and I didn't the even emperor shave. has you know I mean? no clothes. And you know what? The empress. It might not even be an empress now that you mentioned it. She might be Ooh. the person that that washes the emperor's feet. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, and not I just and not only me as the who I thought was the empress me not only am I discovering it for the first time but I'm I'm in the moment of you discovering it while I'm discovering it and so it's even more vulnerable yeah and so it's even more raw yeah because because we're gonna discover together that I'm actually not who I've been fronting to be all along. Ooh. Which, by the way, so, so that's the emotional cocktail, which, by the way, just to be real and to be honest with ourselves and to be compassionate with ourselves, yeah. the, emotional, the emotional cocktail that I call, it's like all these emotions. That's why it's a cocktail. Mm-hmm. It's not just one. Basically, when they go off in our body, right, when we've been triggered and bam, there's all the emotions, right, running through us, mm-hmm. At the biological level, we become addicted to that, to those chemicals mm-hmm. that are being released. Mm-hmm. So now, at the cellular level, we're addicted to these emotional cocktails, wow. which is why it becomes so easy for us to stay in patterns. Pattern. Because not only, life is, not only is life giving us feedback for what we believe that we don't even know we believe, mm-hmm. because this belief was in your subconscious until we brought it forth. But now you're actually going situations, relationships, circumstances that are going to make sure that they deliver that emotional fix. Mm, okay? So that's why we get, yeah. So, but then aside from the emotional cocktail, what we're talking about is now you recognize you have a behavioral pattern because our emotional state of being, mm-hmm. be- our behavior. It, it, it very much at least influences our behavior. Yeah. So time, over time, 
you've created a way to cope with this with this um, trigger. Mm -hmm. When life and what's the trigger? When life says, "Yep, indeed, Angela, that belief that's in your subconscious that you don't even know you own, it's true." Look, here's your partner just spending a few days, a few weeks with you, and he's already seen shit that you didn't even know was there. Yeah. Right. So what happens that you've co that you've that you've created ways to cope? And the ways that you've created to cope is you use your gifts of like bam, 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 dispensing the truth mm -hmm. in ways that no one can fight against that. Ooh. Like who's going to who's gonna sit there and argue with Angela? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like who's going to disprove anything Angela has to say? Mm -hmm. I mean, girl, it's your biggest gift. There's no, there's no way that anybody can come at you when you've decided to like pull out that gift that we've called it the sword of truth, mm -hmm. except that this is not the real truth that comes from your heart. Yeah. This is a truth that comes from the woundedness. Yeah. Wounded ego. It's the woundedness. It's the woundedness. And so here's where. Here's where I have to differentiate traditional coaching from okay. the shamanistic approach. Yeah. Yeah. Because in traditional coaching, it's very masculinely driven. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's very, it's basically, we'll, we'll discover what that energetic imprint is, or they call it core limiting belief, yank, yank it the fuck out, grab an affirmation from wherever there is one, mm -hmm. and reprogram your mind. Do, 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 do. Not recognizing or at least not really considering the fact that the part of us that is attached to that belief mm -hmm. is, your, is your wounded inner child. Mm -hmm. We just label it the ego and we give it so much power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we create this fucking monster out of it. When the ego is a very, it's a very beautiful part of us. Mm -hmm. It's what makes us unique like snowflakes. Yeah. There's no other one of us in, in the entire multiverse mm -hmm. now where we get caught up is that we call that we refer the wounded part of our of our of our ego the whole ego we just blanket the whole ego mm -hmm. but just for right here right now angela i guess what i'm saying is that the part of you that has created the behavioral pattern that basically says listen there's just no messing with you when you're protecting that woundedness of you, mm -hmm. of yours, the defensiveness, the, I mean, like you'll slay whomever can, who, whomever comes at you because there's just no winning. Mm -hmm. It's your gift. So I guess what I'm saying is that the part of you that has co-created that behavioral pattern is your little baby Angela. It's your little girl. Yeah. And so then, so what is it that we do then? Right is the question. What is it that we do? Well, first we acknowledge. First we acknowledge that it's not well. If I dump Kareem, then I'll just find someone else that doesn't think that he has the right to tell me pa 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 da pa. Right? It's actually taking accountability for. Wait a minute. This shit that felt really uncomfortable. It's my shadow, and it's gonna follow me everywhere I go. <laughs> so I might. You know, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I might as well handle it now. Mm -hmm. There's no better time to handle it than right now. There's no better place to be <laughs> than right here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like you know what I'm saying? And, and so how? And so then the question is, well, how do we handle it? Well, first by taking accountability. The mm -hmm. part of it is ours. So, what is it that we that we did with you? Well, in your case, we'd already known that that and we'd already extracted that energetic imprint and like i said we have five seven of them i think right? i have more than that yeah you might need to look at my clinical notes i might have more than seven. <laughs> well what happens is then we have like strands of them yeah but when we come to the core, the core and we yeah. distill them you know what i mean and so and so what happens is that then if we're going, if we're taking, what's the shamanistic approach? Well, the shamanistic approach just means that we bring in the divine feminine energy into the process. Mm -hmm. It's not just masculine, masculinely driven by let's just reprogram your mind and yank that shit out. And, no, it's 
bringing in the divine feminine. And so how do we do that? Well, by asking ourselves, well, what is it, right? That some, so going eagle eye on all of it, what is it that somebody would need to believe about the nature of life, the nature of self, Mm -hmm. the nature of romantic relationships in order to have co-created this dynamic, right? In your case, you co-created a, you know, basically there's how you co-created part of it is with this belief that shit, if I get discovered, it will be the end of me. Mm. If I get discovered, not perfect it will literally do away with me as I know myself Mm. and I can't bear it I can't take it and so it's so weird because I that definitely resonates with me but I also know like I know in my mind I don't know that I've embraced it in my soul or in my heart yet but I know in my like in my deep knowingness I guess like that will also alleviate a ton of pressure that I'm putting on myself Oh, well, part of what we've seen with this, with the behavioral pattern of this energetic imprint, because there's this belief that you're dispensable. If you get discovered, then you overextend yourself like nobody's business. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. I mean, you will, you will, you will handle everybody's stuff. You know what I mean? And then some. Mm-hmm. You will, I mean, like, take on the entire, you will completely overextend yourself to run away from the feeling that if you come dispensable, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, so then, so what is it when, so what is it that then people do? I mean, and it takes a while to get to, well, does it take a while? Well, I guess that more so than it taking a while, because it doesn't matter how long it takes for these energetic imprints to come forth. Mm -hmm. What I must say is that when they do come forth, that's 75% of the work. Wow. Because it's literally like taking a candle into a dark closet that's never been opened and lighting the light. It could be a tiny little match. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, the big old monster in the room is no longer a monster. It's just the belief that you've been carrying along mm-hmm. for your whole life. And so yeah. then the question is: This is where the um, this is where the the shamanistic approach comes in. Mm-hmm. Again, in that then once we've we've identified the belief, we want to understand well where does it come from? Yeah. Because all of these beliefs come from our family lineage. Yeah. Okay, all of these beliefs come from our family lineage. And so for, for my clients that have been adopted and what have you, not only does it come from their caregivers, but it comes literally from their bloodline. Yeah, in their DNA. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And so we don't go back to, well, where did it come from? My father's side of the lineage, my mother's side of the lineage, to stay there in psychoanalysis. Mm-hmm. We go there... Because the moment we can understand, well, shoot, you know, like when my when my mom was growing up or when my my great grandfather was was um, living his life, you know, there was this belief that, you know, he he would that he would didn't even he wasn't even valued as a human. Hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that they feel that powerful to us because literally they've been pa- they've been passed down and they have the energetic Weight. Yeah. That's why in the shamanistic world we call them energetic imprints. They have the energetic weight of generations past, Ooh. and yeah. that's why they feel so damn heavy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now the thing is, when you understand where it comes from, you are naturally when we understand we're able to extend compassion. Mm-hmm. When we understand, we naturally extend compassion. And compassion is an ingredient that we absolutely need, as you know, when you're doing the work. Mm. Because we sure need a lot of compassion to give ourselves and in the recognition that you're that these energetic imprints are going to continue to show up and show up and show up several different layers, several different times in order for us to just surely but slowly start to disintegrate them. The thing that's so um, 
I think challenging is for me, I am not very patient either. So you deal mm. with um, the lack of patience and like you, like you said, it, they'll continue to show up. So you will have, well, at least I will have thought that I dealt with something and then it manifests itself in another way. And I'm like, wait, I thought I was done with that. <laughs> so was, what do you do to, um, I think like impatience is also a way of not showing compassion. What do you do to be patient with yourself when you're dealing with like, the, the resurgence of or like the, the new manifestation of an, an old energetic imprint that hasn't really gone anywhere, but it's it showed up in a different way. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. There's many different ways to answer this because I want to give you something very specific for you. Okay, so give me a second. Well, first, by recognizing that that everything in life moves in a spiral, we're constantly evolving, whether we kick and scream along the freaking way or we go with the flow of it. OK, mm -hmm. we're literally our life is literally like a spiral. Yeah. And so when we're spiraling, OK, there are access points, which are our beliefs our energetic imprints, okay? So when we spiral up, we will hit once again that access point until we've actually completely dismantled these beliefs, which we can go into into how we do that if we have time. So we, so we basically spiral up, we hit that access point, and it will feel like, didn't I work through this shit like 10 years ago? Yeah. Like sometimes it's like literally like that. Like didn't I work through my mother wound 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is that you did except from a different vantage point. Wow. Yeah. So when you hit it again, rather than saying, damn, like I'm not pro progressing or whatever, you view it as an opportunity because life once again is giving you an opportunity to peel back another level mm -hmm. or layer, I should say, so that you can literally dismantle it because guess what? We're able to dismantle them. Hmm. We're a, this work is about dismantling them because once again, kind of going back to the collective consciousness, yeah. we can't impact the collective consciousness and change the world if we're not willing to change mm -hmm. our inner, inner, our inner, our inner demons, our inner energetic imprints, our inner selves. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing this work, not only are we doing it, for the collective consciousness, but we're also doing it for our ancestors and for our future generations. It's said so these energetic imprints get passed down from one generation to the next. When we recognize life is not linear, like we've been in this synthetic time frame, but literally it's like everything is in the present moment. Mm -hmm. When we do the true healing, we're clearing. I mean, when we're doing stripping away these layers okay this time this one for you didn't come through work it came through kareem mm -hmm. now that it's come through kareem it's an opportunity let me pull back those layers why so that i could strip down the energetic imprint of it mm -hmm. from my ancestors and so that i could really truly leave a legacy for the generation that comes that comes after us so that they don't have to co-create a reality for themselves is, yep, indeed, you're not enough. You thought you were all that, but you're really not. Let's keep it a secret mm -hmm. and let's just engage in behaviors that are going to be coping behaviors instead of behaviors that are mm -hmm. that that create that uh, that that expand mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. your life and your opportunities, but but build the the kind of paradigm that we all want to live in yeah. of unity consciousness. Because if you're not believing that you are, that you are um, really who you wish you are, mm -hmm. then then how are you then viewing the world in in the darkest of moments? Mm -hmm. Like not enough, like deficient, like mm -hmm. like um, 
like a hell hole. Yeah. Like you, you see what I mean? Yeah. Except when you come into the truth of who you really are, then, then you recognize the divinity that's within you and always has been, mm -hmm. the connection that you have to source energy. Mm -hmm. And then you can't help but see the beauty and the splendor of love in all of all of creation. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it is. Because it, it's, it's so, I think, one, it's so timely given all that we're collectively facing right now. Even if everybody's on their own journey, like the way this happened is so mind-blowing and fascinating to me. I'm like, we really all got put in a position to stop. We really all got to see the significance of healthcare workers to our survival. We really get to see, um, you know, whether it's the sanitation mm. workers or people who serve food in restaurants and people have been fighting about whether or not they should get a certain wage. We really get to see how much they matter and you know like whether or not this should there should be this huge distinction between with someone who owns a company and someone who manages a company and someone who works there if there really should be this disparity in wages so there are all these things that we just accept it as a given and as truth and now we're being asked a question and i think it's so powerful um, especially if we could do it for ourselves, like our character, the things that, you know, um, cause us to tick, the things that tick us off, right? Like all of those things at once. And I want to rise to this occasion, not in busyness, but like as my authentic self, I want to come out on the other side of this having learned a new skill, even if that skill is loving on myself so I can love on everybody else. Like, I really want to do that, you know, on the other side of that. I want people to know who you are and how much you have made such a tremendous, like, light years <laughs> difference in my life over the last couple of years. It's just, you've been an incredible blessing to me and, um, you know, part of the reason why I really wanted to do this masterclass series is so people got to see people I love and respect and, um, learn from the learn from the best you know so i'm grateful mm. even if we had to take all the emperor's clothes off today <laughs> mm. thank you and to let just one one piece that you just to kind of come full circle yeah. back and, and bringing it back into your session so when when you know how you know the question was like how do i and how do people yeah. deal with the elephant in the room yeah right and so then the first, so what I said is by first taking accountability yeah. that it's not happening to you. Mm. How does then that reflect in the collective consciousness? Well, because when we start to take accountability yeah. for our own lives and the co-creation of our own lives, then we could have the empowered courage to look out into the world and say, shit's not right. It's not, I'm not going to take, well, this is just the way it is, mm -hmm. but instead I'm going to, I'm going to recognize that I'm a powerful co-creator. Yeah. And so if this entire is not working, what would? So not all, I feel like this t time that we're, that we're here has many different opportunities mm -hmm. for a lot of us. It's going to be creative, mm -hmm. creative opportunities like what you're doing. Right. So, OK, so I'm not out there. Bam, bam, bam. Speeches. And right. Yeah. I'm here at home. Mm -hmm. Right. How is it that I could co-create an opportunity for myself? And so then the question is, how is it that what? So I guess something that could be really powerful just as a as an additional takeaway is what's the elephant in the room so that I can start to co-create my own life mm -hmm. consciously from mm -hmm. the inside out and then taking it further. What is it? that we collectively would need to believe about the nature of life, mm -hmm. the nature of self, the nature of human beings to have co-created such a fucking disaster. Mm. Straight up. A disaster. Yeah. 
I come from a third world country. I come from Mexico. Mm -hmm. Like, pops up in your face, little children, like, on the streets, right? Mm -hmm. It's a disaster. What did we have to believe collectively in order to have to uh, co-create that? And so then the question is, when we start to do the collective work is, what would we need to believe instead? Yeah. And then let the answers, the ancestors talk to you. Mm. Let the, let the future generations talk to you. Yeah. Let your spirit guides, whatever your source of higher reference is, talk to you. But that can only happen if we stop. Mm -hmm. And we've been stopped. No better time. Full, full on emergency break, Yanni. <laughs> it's like Burr. no better time. Yeah. Like if not now, of like what, like how is it that we can li- literally co-create an entire new reality that mm. we call new earth? Yeah. Let's use our co-creative powers to to rather than solve problems, mm. co-create new solutions and it. innovations and new systems. Yeah. Because a lot of our creative energy has gone into the defensiveness, into into the tit for tat, into the fighting against the matrix. Fuck it. We're co-creating a new matrix. We're literally weaving a new matrix of unity consciousness. And the research is there. Wisdom traditions have no about all of this. And quantum physics is no joke because it'll explain it to our rational yeah. Western minds. Mm-hmm. And that there's just no denying it. Mm-hmm. So, my love. Ooh, yes, this is so good. Co-creating in regards to solutions. your personal query, yeah. in regards to your personal query, mm-hmm. what's your takeaway from the recognizing that what was irking your nerves right now with your partner, mm-hmm. you're, you're at least halfway responsible for with your energetic imprint? Of like, damn, if I get discovered, I'm not enough. And so then what do I do? I go into defensive mode. Mm-hmm. What would radically different behavior look like now that you now that you know that or have been reminded of that? I think radically different would be instead of going into fight mode or defense mode where there's like this wall or there's like a lash out, I will say, wow, that doesn't feel that good. Let me sit with it so that I don't have that like that immediate knee-jerk response, which is normally not good, like, because the claws are out. Um, But, like, sit with it and then acknowledge what is true, what is hard, um, Mm -hmm. and what I'm willing to do to um, be my best self. And that means authentic. That means willing to grow. That means willing to communicate. That means willing to love. And this sounds mm. all good right mm. now. I really need like a ten step program for when this pops mm. up next time. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. I feel well. You just, I, you, I mean, just if I'm bouncing it back yeah. to you, you already created it, which is I step away mm-hmm. so that so that I can sit with, so I could be with my emotions and not be reactive. Yes, but but I I'm, I'm stepping away so I can be with emotions. Mm-hmm not judge them or the situation or any of it allow it to be what it is and emotions literally just allow them to just be what they are they run through us in about a minute and a half wow then the mind comes in again and then we do the process again and however many times it takes Mm -hmm. because then the mind will come in and say yeah but this too but then that too Mm -hmm. so however many times right to clear to clear and then if i'm hearing you correctly right then you come back and you say, all right, let's have a conscious dialogue. This is what it felt like. Mm-hmm. In true vulnerability and transparency, this is what it felt like. Mm-hmm. And what it reminded me of was this core energetic imprint or core limiting belief that I have or energetic imprint, right, that I've been dragging around in my shadow for many years, shows up in this kind of situation, that kind of situation, this kind of situation is showing up right now. Yeah. And this is my biggest fear. This is what's really being triggered. Mm -hmm. But now that the elephant has been clearly defined, now I can listen. Mm -hmm. Now I can listen to your sacred point of view because your sacred point of view has a view view behind me that gets to catch all this that I don't. Mm. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and then that my love is called the conscious dialogue and mm-hmm. and there's no way a relationship can thrive without it mm-hmm. Ooh, okay <laughs> That's good, but it's also good for any type of um, partnership that we find ourselves in in life, whether it's the partnership of friendship, the partnership with parents and siblings and, you know, your your business partners. Like, you have to be able to have that real raw communication. Otherwise, you're putting forth your representative or whatever. And so you can't really, I don't think you can truly exist in partnership where there's no real transparency and transparency does not feel good, but I'm going to work on it. (laughs) Transparency, Angela, something that I just defined recently is that transparency is us just being in our truth regardless. Yeah. Like transparency is like, it don't matter if it's the Pope, if it's the president, like transparency is like being in our truth regardless Right now, vulnerability, hmm. vulnerability is when we use our discernment, see who is worthy, energetically speaking, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Worthy of meeting us at, at where we're at, at the heart level. Wow. And so if we've used our discernment and, and you've decided Kareem, you trust him, right? You've already discerned that and you trust him then vulnerability is allowing yourself to be seen not just in transparency Mm -hmm. but in your in your in your low vibrational self your high vibrational self in your fears in your joys in your everything in between Mm -hmm. and and listen i mean you got this yeah you got this thank you this is so good (laughs) it's so good um, the people know some of my business now, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> transparently, so they know some of it. But you all, I just really want you to know how much of a gift Yadi is. Um, you can always tell, like, if I really believe in someone or something by my the way that I promote it to my world. So all my friends know about Yadi, and if they've ever told me they need a therapist or someone to talk to, I've always, always, always connected Yadi. And so I'm just, again, I'm just so grateful for who you are to me as a sister, as a guide, as a coach, um, just as an advisor, like you are just incredible. Um, Mm. And I'm grateful to have you in my life. Thank you, Yadi. I love you so much. Well, I receive that. I receive that full heartedly. Because it's um, my highest honor to be observed mm. in this way. And I absolutely adore you. Thank you. So thank you. And thank you to everybody that's watching this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.